Hi everybody, I'm Jessie the Lookout, and today I'm going to talk to you about my TCAP haul. TCAP, or the Toronto Comic and Arts Festival, is an annual event celebrating independent and small press publishing. Artists from all levels come together to show and sell their art. Stuff like comics, prints, posters, art books, all kinds of visual art stuff is shown and sold at TCAP. This year was my first year going, so I picked up a ton of stuff. So I want to show you guys just a bite of the things I got. This isn't everything that I picked up yet, because I haven't gotten around to reading all the stuff, but um, I'm going to get through this as fast as I can so I can show you guys as many comics as I can without boring you. So let's get to it. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is As the Crow Flies by Melanie Gailman. Charlie Lamont feels really out of place at her summer camp for Christian girls. Like being a teenage girl isn't awkward enough, she's the only dark skinned girl in the entire troop of, of white chicks. And from this eye roll, right as we're shown the cross, I'd say she doesn't exactly share their beliefs. The all girl camp group is going to take a week to travel to the top of the three peaked mountain, Mount Sanctuary. Here they're going to play homage to the area's first feminist, God, and the strength of womanhood as a whole. I really like the art in this because it's done entirely in pencil crayons. Like I, like the colors and the lines are just like, this is pencil crayon magic. This is only the first chapter, so we're just introduced to Charlie and all of her friends, but you can read her ongoing webcomic at her website, which I'll link to down below. Next up is Pond Smelt by Jane Mai and published by Piao Comics. Jane had just moved to her new town and she hasn't made any new friends yet. She feels kind of lonely and she makes friends with the wolf boy Lobo when he challenges her to a fishing contest. This is a really touching story that surprised me a lot. It takes place in an Animal Crossing town where Janie plays the role of the human character, but it's not, it doesn't have the same feel as the Animal Crossing games. Like, this is has a little bit more of a serious tone, whereas Animal Crossing is light and fun and not, not too many emotional stakes. The art is really simple, but the storytelling is really great. Like, it, it made me feel real feels by the end. The story in this, it's, this is a complete story. There's no, there's no chapter after it, or you don't need to know anything about Animal Crossing in order to read it. It's just, it is a very touching story of people who are sometimes misunderstood and how being a loner can come off to people around you and the effects that has on people who get close to you. It's really, it's, it's a good story. Jane Mai has a ton of comics and a lot of samples of her work on her website. This is Third Wheel by Hannah Kay and published by Piao. Hagoth and Tommen are two orphan boys living in the post-apocalyptic world of 2007. They spend most of their time looking for food and hanging out until they find a strange girl with thumbs for, on her feet. She's a mutant, and in this world, mutants are illegal, and it's illegal not to report them. The murder of mutants is highly encouraged, but despite this, Hagoth takes the girl back to their house with them, and this ends up leading to trouble. The art in this is very cute. She uses the blue monochrome style really well in it. There seems to be, there seems to be a lot of blue and pink ink used this year. Not just in the comics either, like there were people with blue and pink hair all over the place. This was just, this wasn't actually a comics convention, this was a celebration of bright colors. This one that I picked up was just chapter one. Uh, there isn't anything else of this out yet, but if you're curious about something like this, you can check out Hannah's website below. This one is A Mid-Autumn Night's Dream by Robin Hoff. This is an, a really quick comic about a guy who gets seduced by magic and fairies and then defies the wishes of an immortality granting unicorn. It's incredibly short, like only about six pages in total, but the artist that I bought it from said that this was their excuse to draw unicorns, and I'd say they were pretty successful at it. The unicorn is gorgeous, these colors are incredibly vibrant, and I, I liked reading it. It was like five bucks, and like these I'm pretty sure are traditionally painted drawings and I, I love it. I love the art in this. Totally worth it. Um, I think some people would say these colors are a little bit overwhelming, but those people are weak. If you want to see more Robin stuff, you know where to look. This one is Free People by L. Nichols and published by Grindstone Comics. Free People is a series of visual poems depicting a blonde woman and cutouts of text made from books or magazines. I don't know. The poems themselves are pretty existential as this woman goes on her journey of self-discovery. Um, it's kind of her story as she stumbles through life and relationships and rebirth. I really like the line work in this and the artist uses arrows to kind of show the intention of the subject. Um, this was a really interesting 
comic compared to some of the more narrative stories that I bought. Most comics were more narrative based, like they tell the story from a character's perspective, but these ones are more abstract in what they mean and I, I liked it. It was it was an interesting change. And I picked up, I also grabbed another one of Elle Nichols comics that I read a couple of pages of and the art style is uh, a little bit different like the arrows and like some of the hatching is still there but it's cool to see her develop a little or try different styles that's I, I just think that's really interesting from an artistic perspective if you want to see more of Elle Nichols down below Slow Dream by Kate Mukai um I believe this is autobiographical in a sense um it tells her thoughts and feelings after she breaks up with um, someone very close to her. The comic is kind of disjointed short stories with illustrations. Um, this was a pretty quick read because like the stories are only a couple of pages long, but I really enjoyed the art. I thought it was interesting that she used like animal heads for people to kind of keep them uh, anonymous. So if you knew who she was, you could probably figure it out. But like as a reader, I just think it was an, an interesting device to use. I couldn't open her website on my iPad because it was flash based, but um, I'll link to it anyway if you want to check it some of it out. You got a cool drawing of movie. This is Manical Beatdown, uh, number one and one point five by Jen Woodall and uh, and published by Friendship Press. Uh, these comics made me laugh. They deliver exactly what they say in the title. Uh, it's a magical girl who gets harassed by some guys and so she transforms and then kicks the shit out of them. And that's pretty much yeah, that's pretty much the comic. Uh, Again, we've got some pink and blue text going on, but uh, the comic changes from her mundane blue into her like fancy bright pink whenever she transforms into a magical girl. And it was it was really funny. This was a quick read, but I, I really enjoyed it. It also came with like a sticker pack too, which unfortunately I can't find, but like that's awesome. So in my package I got number one, 1 1.5, which is like she kind of kicks the shit out of some guys without weapons in this one, and in 1.5 it's like, no, no, she can actually kick serious butt. It's not, she just didn't beat up a bunch of defenseless dudes, she can hold her own in a fight. A fair fight. Which is good. And I like that. This is 36 Lessons in Self-Destruction by Robert Woods, and this is published by Locust Moon Press. This is a series of stories by a man who suffers from depression and mental illness, and um, I read it on the train on the way home, and it was... It was very depressing, but not in a woe is me kind of way. It I, I wish I could take Robert and fix all his problems with hugs and kisses because this these stories tell his truth. There is a foreword at the beginning of this by a friend of Robert Woods that is very important to read because it gives you context for the artist and where these stories come from. Robert Woods has been suffering with mental illness his whole life. He's a person who was filled with a lot of love, but not a lot of hope. And as a result, um, cannot see the value in himself and his work. This is, this is very good. It, it shows like kind of how futile mental illness and depression can feel, how it makes you feel helpless and alone and isolated and what those thoughts can do to someone. It was very good. I, I liked reading it a lot and I wish, I wish I could tell everyone how special they are and tell this man in particular that he is important and that no one in the whole world can fulfill his place like he does and that his work means things to people. Here, I just, I want to give him a big hug. Just a big hug. With it, I also got a trading card for one of the characters. Um, this girl's name is is Bella and she's got like a play card on the back for like everything about her. Uh, she's good at housekeeping and laundry and she has bipolar ADHD and bipolar disorder. So I don't think Robert Woods has a website but I'll link you to Locust Press. Um, I don't think Robert has a website but I'll link you to Locust Moon Press below. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is Skim. Skim is by Mariko and Jillian Tamaki. This is the story of a teenage witch as she goes through her high school experience, falling in love with her teacher and trying to find her place and trying to balance uh, modern day witchcraft with being a high school student and how, you know, that gets kind of complicated and sometimes you can be unsure of yourself as a modern pagan. It was a very touching story that I really enjoyed. The art is is very good. I had already read this before going to TCAF, but I got this and another book for 20 bucks. 
and that was totally worth it because when I read this, I really, I really liked it. Suicide, depression, love, sexuality, crushes, cliques of popular, manipulative peers, the whole g gamut of teen life is explored in this literary graphic masterpiece. Masterpiece? Masterpiece. Get it today. Haha. <laughs> That's all the narrative ones I got. And I got a couple of art one, art zines, one of which is I'm a Shark by Noelle Stevenson. This has some cute artworks, just a collective of this is just a collection of illustrations from her Tumblr and some illustrations that haven't been published online yet. It's it's very cute. A little bite of an art book from Noelle Stevenson or Ginger Hayes. Um, if you don't know who Ginger Hayes is, then you must live under some kind of internet rock. So I'll link you below and you can... All of these illustrations are based on characters. All of them? All of the illustrations in here are based off of her characters in her comic Nimona which is on its last chapter, so if you haven't started reading it, you've got a lot of catching up to do. Last one I got is Three Blades, Sword Fights Number 2 by Elliot Alfredius. Alfredius? Published by Piao Comics. Lots of Piao. I think Piao is a small publishing thing, uh, from what I've gathered. Um, this is an art book with illustrations of characters that this person has done. Um, as warm-ups, initially as warm-ups, then just for funsies as they started to find relationships between the characters and like this is really good, like I love it, these colors are so good and like the illustrations, like all the characters are just such unique shapes and like they have their own defining features and like oh this is good, this was a good buy, I think this was like the first book we bought and like yeah, I super like it. In the front of this it makes a point of saying that some of the colors may have shifted because of the printing process they used, but that just makes the book special. So my book's special from your book. And I got, um, I like ones that number the one, number them. Look at that, I got 29 of 200. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything other than that I support artists. So those are all the comics I got. I hope you enjoyed looking at them. Uh, TCAF is an annual thing and it's completely free to get into. Like it costs no money to get into the festival. So I mean, if you're in the Toronto area in around May, you should definitely consider attending TCAF. Like there are so many artists there and it's really awesome. Um, the only th thing that kind of makes me frowny face a little is that there's no cosplaying allowed. This is a no cosplay festival because they like to place emphasis on the creators and not the fans. Like this is celebrating creators and supporting local and independent artists. This isn't about the fans necessarily. If you would like to see more comic reviews and comic pulls, then you can check out my channel. Um, link to all the artists down below. Did you go to TCAF this year? What did you get? You should comment down below and let me know what you guys. Um, if you liked looking at this, feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, what else? You can check out more stuff on my channel. I also do outfits of the week and unboxings of things if you're into that kind of stuff at all. You are all looking fabulous today and I hope you have a great day. See you around.